right, so today is all about underground utilities. We've been putting in a bunch of them here on a remodel project. Right behind me here, you can see a new 400 amp underground service. I'm gonna walk you around the project and show you what we've been working on. I've been here about a week and a half, so there's a lot that got done. So let's get going. <laughs> All right, so what you're looking at here, this is a 60 amp overhead service. It's ancient. I don't know how long it's been here. It's actually on the riser going up. It actually has a rope holding it up at the top of the pole, which is super dangerous. So you can see that there, but this, this pole is getting removed as part of this underground, new underground service is coming in. And you can see down below, this is another pole that's in a pasture that's getting removed. And then the pole down at the street that has a transformer is gonna get moved about 10 feet down the road to the, be to the south side to my left here. And then that's gonna get a larger, uh, larger pole with a larger transformer that they're gonna use to service this underground. What we've done here is we have a trench that comes all the way up that I'll walk you down in the ditch here in a moment so you can see what we've been doing. And you can see how the conduits are laid out. But this trench comes all the way up from the road. It comes down to here where we have a J box because the pole is too long. We came about 160 feet. And then we have a J box, 17 by 30, that goes in here underground this three inch line you can see. And then it runs back all the way up the trench here. And you can see it goes back to the panel that's mounted on the side of that shop. So along with that, what you got is you have some other conduits in here that are for low voltage, as well as there's water lines in here, you can see, and there's also other high voltage lines that are going down to the gate. So let's jump down in the ditch and I'll get you a closer look at what's happening. All right, so behind me here is where we have all the panels tied together. So this electrical panel, low voltage, all that, all those boxes are right here behind me. And I'm gonna turn this camera around. I'm gonna show you how all these tied up and where they go and why we did what we did. All right, so what we're looking at is you have a low voltage can here. You also have your, this is a 200 amp disconnect that you're seeing here on the left. And then this center piece is a 400 amp meter base. And then this other is another 200 amp disconnect. So these disconnects, they're made to service like a, a uh, house or a barn or shop or something's gonna take 200 amps. So this one's actually for a future barn. You can see a 200 amp, it has also some areas for some breakers in there. Same thing is going on on the other side here, but this one is the feed that goes to the house. So what we have is we have a three inch conduit that you can see here, it has a three inch radius sweep that comes into the ground. That is running out all the way to the street to the new power pole that's gonna be put in and they will pull the wire from the power pole to the J box and get a better idea of how this looks from the side here, looking up. So that comes up to the center of that 400 amp meter base. And then it comes down and there's that, you can see the radius on this sweep here as it sweeps into the ground. And we gotta have at least 30, 30 inches of cover, 30, 36 inches of cover on top of that pipe. And anything out of the ground has to be schedule 80. So that for sun exposure, code requires that to happen. You also have this expansion coupler. So if the ground freezes and this, it heaves up that this right here, this, this expansion coupler moves, that will slide. So you can see that actually on this pipe here, we have to still connect this one little voltage line here, but this one, uh, you can see it slide up or slide down. If there's expansion that ha happens, or, or if the ground needs to move, it'll expand and it won't break or push these off the wall. So the thing you're seeing here, this is a turn up disconnect. Coming out of that, we have a two inch conduit, which will be the main subfeed that runs over to the house. So that goes down in, and that sweeps down with a 24 inch radius sweep. That's schedule 40, because we're below grade. And then that takes off and that runs down the ditch. And we actually turn and then at a 90, you lay a flat 90 there just past that tree and it turns and that's gonna be the feed to the house. Uh, this is for the future barn. So that's another two inch that comes out of that other disconnect and then runs. And then what we're doing is we're stubbing that out. So you can see two, there's the, the sweep, the two foot radius sweep that runs out and then we just stub it and we tape the end of this. And then we also have this, you'll see these two one inch lines here. Those are schedule 40 and those are set up for low voltage. So for cable and phone to run to a future barn if it has a living quarters in it. So that is set up that way. You can also see the water line that's here. So the plan will be if the barn gets done at a later time, 
will be to take this trench and just extend it out. We already have all of our utilities ready to tie in nice and easily and get that uh, to where we can, we can just dig and tie it over at the barn. So you can also see here, this is a hydrant, frost-free hydrant that is here that allows us to get water year round without anything freezing. We put pea gravel in the five gallon bucket and this will drain out uh, whenever you shut the hydrant handle at the top. So this is the handle that'll close at the top and then that drains that riser so nothing freezes in there. So this is the drain here for a future irrigation valve that we could possibly tie on to. All right, now a couple other things that to think about is you gotta get power to a gate if you have a driveway. So this right here, this is a, a one inch conduit that's running down to the gate to get power down there to operate a gate operator. And then we also have, you can see here, this is another, we put in another circuit here to operate some actual heaters for the water for the horses uh, that are gonna get done. And so that runs out of those panels and we put a breaker in there to handle that. And the way we set this up for the low volt is this here is a can that it's, we, it came out with no holes in it and we set this up to where uh, the feeds from the pedestal down at the street, they come in here uh, from the pedestal comes in, sweeps up into here, uh, say for phone, and then it sweeps back out and goes over to the house. And then we also have a sweep for that to go back to the barn. So you essentially have a hub here where you get all your phone cable, everything comes back you know, from the street all the way up to here into this hub and then goes out from there. So we end up having six conduits that are tied in here. And then we actually, and then we threw in another one in that's gonna actually be a camera that's gonna go down to the gate. All right, so now let's actually go take a walk down the ditch and I'll show you how we lay this out in the ditch so it meets code. So you have the separation between your low voltage and your high voltage and also your water lines placed correctly. So we're gonna walk down, I'll show you how we got it all laid out. All right, so now we're walking down the ditch and you can actually look back. This is where all the conduit ties in that we were just looking at on the side of the shop. So what you're seeing here is you're seeing a combination of high voltage, low voltage, and water lines. And you can see on the right, this pipe here, this is a three inch, this is the main service. So we have to have a 12 inch separation between our low voltage lines and our main service or anything really in that trench. So this is actually a three foot wide trench. The way we laid this out is we have this three inch that's here on the right. And then we have, these are low voltage lines here in the center. And then I have water lines here. And then we also have high voltage over here. So high voltage, so we got a two inch sub feet to the house, plus another one inch feet to some horse water uh, heaters that are gonna go there. We don't have to have any separation between the water and the, the high voltage lines going to the house. We do have to have that separation between the high voltage being if it's going to the house or it's the main feed of at least 12 inches to make sure we don't have interference between that low volt and the high volt lines. So that's how that happened. And you can see it's okay to cross over with these high volt or the low volt over a high volt if you're just kind of going perpendicular to it. So you can see we have a sweep here. We laid a sweep flat, a little harder to see because of the dirt. We've kind of, we've packed underneath these pipes so they don't have any issues when we backfill to where they settle. But this is a high voltage line. This is a two inch line here. And you can see that the low voltage is crossing over the top of it here. If I can stand up and you can see that a little bit better. So this is the feed. We got to lay this out still a little bit, spread them out right in here. But this is how this is going up to the house. So let me walk you down here. You can see a few more things that are going on. So we have a irrigation line in here as well. It's got had a repair done on it with a compression coupler. And that's what this is. You can see here. So that's your compression coupler. As we walk down here, you can kind of see how this is separated out. So come down the ditch, we got our three inch main uh, service on the left. We got low volt running down the center and then we have a one inch high volt and the water line on the right. So we'll come down here and then this is where we have a J box. So uh, there's a 17 by 30 J box that's gonna go in right here. So we have about a 20 inch spread, 28 inch spread between these conduits. So the power company could fold over their wire. So these get staked, held in place, and you can see the sweep going out this way and then heading back down that way to the road. All right, so along with that main line that's going down for the service for the electrical to the pole, what we have is we have actually three low voltage lines going down there. One is for the gate operator and it'll also take down the camera for the gate. We also have uh, the one for the phone and then one for the cable. So we currently there's only phone down there. So we're taking an extra line down 
there that we're running to the new pole they're putting in plus one to the pedestal for future that way we can get anything that comes out this way because it's a little bit out in the country to that we can get service that way so you can see back this way so this is another so this is actually high voltage that's sweeping up here this is going to be for some heaters for the water on the on the horses or for the horse troughs plus uh, allowing us to get down a junction box get down to the gate operator so you can see these are the sweeps the three inch sweeps coming up for the service and then this is our water line so the water line comes over here and it teases and then this riser here is actually for future irrigation tie in here's your frost free hydrant that has pea gravel down in there and then we wrap this galvanized pipe here with some 20 mil pipe wrapped so you don't get the rusting that happens below grade on these uh, these uh, frost free hydrants so you can see the guys are actually working down there right now but this is they're putting in this or another hydrant down there as well as one more uh, high voltage line for another heater for the horse troughs this here this this comes down this is low volt runs over this is for a like loop on your gate so you want to make sure when you're doing your gates if you have a gate's going to come in this is going to be your exit loop see we labeled these and then you got camera to the gate so that way uh, you can you'll trigger your gate to open and have that up above that so we have an open trench so we're going to do it so you can see the separation here so this is separation 12 inch separation from the main service line and then for the low volt and then we have the high volt on the side here where we have that separation as well for uh, and the water we push off to that side so and then that's maintained as you go down the ditch all the way down the service so this is about here is about 160 foot run as we go down so we were digging we did all this digging with this mini x three foot bucket and some of it with a two foot bucket so it's a kubota kx040 then you can see here again what we have done here is this is a this is we stub off this line instead of just putting a 90 here for this line put a cap on this so we can tie onto this main line water line later and raise it up a little bit so it can go over the top of this if we need to for the service out into feed anything else out in that pasture that needs to be done so and here's your sweep for your gate so that is low volt to the gate and high volt to the gate for the gate operator and then also for the uh, for the camera and another frost free hydrant so then one last thing i'll show you down here this is where we're splitting off to the pedestal that i was talking about so this is the pedestal foam pedestal so we've actually swept up into the bottom of this can with a rise or with a sweep and uh, stubbed it up so they can access in there for the phone they can pull that through and this is our extra one that we have for the pole that is going in so or like the pole is going to go here they actually used a vacuum truck that you can see and they blew out a hole you can't see underneath there right now i guess i could flip it up but it's uh we keep getting a bunch of gophers that can't congregate down that hole but that vacuum truck blows out that dirt and it sucks with water and then it sucks it out and we leave this loose about six feet back from where they're going to tie in so we won't backfill this area here because we want them to be able to have flexibility of where they can move that pipe so that's that's how I, uh, idaho power wants that done all right, I hope you enjoyed that update on the underground we're doing here on the three model project. If you'd like more information, go to our website at freemansconstruction.com, subscribe to their channel, and we'll see you again in the next video.